During the season of Advent, I've been drawing our attention to all the prophecies that we find, especially in our first readings at Mass, not just what we hear on Sundays, but throughout the whole week. Because it's amazing to see how words that are written hundreds, thousands of years before the coming of Jesus are fulfilled by him. Only if the Bible is God's word, inspired by the Holy Spirit, can we find the future written into the past. So, so far we've had many prophecies foreshadowing the ministry of the coming Messiah. We've also had prophecies that there would be an Elijah uh, who's fulfilled by John the Baptist, preparing for the Messiah's coming. Uh, we've had the very first prophecy of the Bible from Genesis of a woman who will have a son that will defeat the enemy. We also heard last week of the Messiah going to be coming from the line of Jacob and Judah and David, that he will be born of a virgin, that a star will mark his arrival. And so this week we have more prophecies to add. Today we have a very clear prophecy from the prophet Micah telling us where the Messiah will be born. You, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. So this prophecy says that we should expect the Messiah to be born in the town of Bethlehem, a small town just south of Jerusalem. And of course, knowing the story of Jesus' birth, we know that that's indeed where he ends up being born. Today's gospel, Mary is actually traveling to the very same area. She's already traveling to see her cousin Elizabeth in the hill country, not far from where Bethlehem is. The name Bethlehem in Hebrew means house of bread. So the bread of life, Jesus, will be born in the house of bread. And uh, this prophecy from Micah, too, gives us a hint more of who this Messiah will be. It says his origin is from of old. In other words, he's not just an ordinary man, but he is the one who has existed from ancient times. He is God himself. On Tuesday of this week, we have a passage from the Song of Solomon. It's love poetry in the Old Testament that expresses the love that God has for all of us, his people. And in that passage on Tuesday, it says that the bridegroom will come to us, springing across the mountains. And in that gospel, we continue tonight's passages by Elizabeth greeting Mary and saying to her, Blessed is the fruit of your womb. And the unborn bridegroom, who is now come, Jesus, he has been brought by his mother, springing across the hills into the hill country. And, of course, John, within his own mother, Elizabeth, he also leaps and springs for joy at the presence of Jesus, the bridegroom. On Wednesday of this week, we have the story of Hannah in the Old Testament. And she dedicates her son, Samuel, to serve God in the temple. And in doing so, she offers to God a song of praise. She says, My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in my God. Well, this song of Hannah for her son Samuel is echoed in the gospel of that day by Mary's own song of praise for her son Jesus. Mary says, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. On Friday of this week, uh, the first reading, again, we, we hear from the Old Testament We hear of King David's desire to build a temple, to build a house for God. But God instead tells David that he will build a house of David's line. I will raise up your heir after you, your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand forever. And this is paired with the canticle of Zechariah who exclaims that God has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David, as he promised through his prophets of old. So he's pointing out that this Messiah who's come 
is a king from the house of David and is in fulfillment of all the prophecies. Monday this week, we'll again have a prophecy from Isaiah that we've actually already heard in one of the days, that the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. And that's paired with the story of the Annunciation, where Gabriel comes to Mary and says that she will be the mother of the Messiah. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him his throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. So a number of things that Gabriel is explaining to Mary there, that she indeed is going to be the mother of the Messiah, she who is a virgin, just as was foretold by Isaiah, and that this child that she will have will be the Messiah from the line of David. Finally, on Thursday of this week, we hear the very last lines of the Old Testament from the prophet Malachi. He says, Suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek. And so, it's very appropriate that these Advent prophecies will suddenly give way to Christmas this coming Saturday, where we will celebrate the fulfillment of all of these prophecies in the birth of Jesus Christ. So I've made brief reference to a number of the different readings that we have this coming week, these immediate preparation for the celebration of Christmas. To, so I continue to encourage you to prepare yourself for this great celebration of Christmas by engaging in these readings, by pondering the beautiful mysteries of God's great love for us as he foretold centuries before. Praying with these scriptures is one of the easiest ways for us to encounter our Lord, to hear his voice, and discover his love and plan for us.